All right guys, today we're out here looking at this Mazda 6 and the eBay coilovers I put on it a little over a year ago now. Um, at the time, I didn't really think it was worth making a video on, but kind of want to get on here and show you some of the problems I've had within the first year and some of my solutions to those and also some quality issues with the eBay coilovers. Uh, I mean, as you can expect for $350, $400, whatever that costs now, uh, they're not the highest of quality parts. And then towards the end of this, we'll pull down to some level ground and I'll give you an idea of the ride height, then we'll probably wrap up with kind of a general review. Uh, as much as I'd like to start with the rear right here where I've had the most issues, um, I'm actually gonna pick up the front, take this tire off, and just burn through that real quick because it's not gonna take long on the front. Okay, up here at the front of the vehicle, not gonna spend a ton of time up here because the install went really smoothly and I really haven't had any issues. We'll say, these studs, I don't know if you can see them, there you go. These studs right here that come up through were not pressed in good on mine and a couple of them were spinning. You know, as you would tighten these up, they would spin. So I actually wound up taking my cool, mine back out and taking, pressing the studs out and taking a punch and kind of putting some dimples on the hole so that when you press the stud back in, it holds tight. Okay, and then down here on the bottom, couple things uh, this rubbing right here is because of the way I have this brake line zip tied and the reason I have it zip tied is because this mount is normally on the coolover about right here and as you can see not here on the eBay coolover so uh, there's really nowhere to mount that and I just zip tied it there and the zip ties broke one time and it got kind of rattling pinched in there so there's that and then the other thing is when you install these things go ahead and take sway bar loose uh, take this top bolt area sway bar take this pinch bolt out completely out take this bottom bolt out right here and that's really all you got to take out you I mean you'll have to take the bolt out of your brake line on your factory ones as far as the setting as far as setting the ride height when I got these, I decided to go ahead and check the preload, and I'm glad I did because they were different on the two sides. So what I did is I just backed both of these off, just threaded them down here until the spring was loose. Threaded the top one on until it was touching the spring. Now I threaded the bottom one up to touch the top one. Okay, from there, I kept the bottom one exactly where it was. I put a piece of tape on it so it wouldn't move. And I took the top one and threaded it up a half an inch between you know threaded this one up to give you basically a half an inch of preload and then I you know I just of course locked this one down and I will say uh, throw you a little blue Loctite on these because I have had them vibrate loose before on this exact set of coolovers as far as setting your actual ride height you do that down here by threading this whole shock body into this base right here so you loosen this collar right here and then you can turn this shock and thread it further down in there. And where I've got mine set, it's about right in here. I wouldn't know exactly where, but it's almost bottomed out. And uh, that seems to be a pretty good spot where I've got it, honestly. Another thing you might've noticed if you got a keen eye is <laughs> got a busted CV boot I didn't even know that really until I just got out here to make this video but it doesn't surprise me the car's got a little over 200,000 on it now it's lowered so but that's all in the front really we'll move on to the back where I've had the most issues and like I said on to the back here where I'm actually fixing what's been giving me the most issues which is the shock absorbers that come with the eBay kit so the Mazda 6 has a cool spring and a shock absorber. So on the rear, it's not a true cool over. Well, these have both bent and broken. Um, and the bushings won't stay in them. They keep walking out. So that's actually what I'm here to fix today. But before we do that, let me just give you an overview of the other issues I've had with the back of this thing which stem from both the shock absorbers and the kit in general so what I mean is 
like I said, this is a cool spring, and then you ha normally have a shock absorber right here, which is out right now because it just broke. The buckets that they send you, this red piece that I'm touching out here, does not go low enough. I actually had to modify these, and I'd love to take it out and show you the modification, but I really just don't feel like doing that right now. So I'll try to put a picture on the screen. There's some good stock images on uh, Google that I can show you what the modification is but basically there's a thick spacer on the bottom that is threaded on there and if you unthread that it allows you to lower the actual spring seat all the way down to the bottom and that's all I did um, got it as low as I could reused the stock spring isolator on the top and I added just a little piece of thin rubber on the bottom to try to help dampen that right that spring and make it maybe ride a little bit quieter the other issue is that the shocks even bottomed all the way out wouldn't go low enough from the factory even with the shock threaded as far down because it's bottomed out right now uh, threaded all the way down in there it was holding the car up extremely high like almost stock height and it would bottom out the shock absorber before the suspension even moved any so i don't know uh, what the deal is there but what i did to remedy that was like I said, this thing was maybe, you know, about there. I cut it off, moved it up here, and welded it back on. And that's what you see right here. Um, this is just a, a gusset for it. There's the factory bushing. Um, and I did press these bushings out while I welded it so they wouldn't burn. But all of that didn't make a difference because it was still, even with it moved up a good two and a half inches or so, was still bottom out. And ultimately, I think the bottoming out is what caused the shocks to bend and uh, break. The shock I'm replacing it with is a KYB um, 349, let me see, 349073. And these are actually for like a Dodge Caravan, believe it or not. <laughs> Just thought it was kind of odd. But they're two inches shorter than the factory, and they have only one inch shorter stroke than factory so they got a pretty good bit of stroke on them and the bolt hole sizes are everything are fine but they're a little narrow right here and believe me i searched and searched and searched and could not find one that was the right width so what i wound up doing was having these little spacers made uh, just turned them off on the lathe and used those to take up that extra slack you could easily stack washers in there and accomplish the same thing so another thing that really kind of fought me during the installation was getting the factory shocks out as well as putting the ebay shocks in and a lot of that was because i didn't realize you needed to drop the subframe and i know it's really there drop the subframe like that but basically what you want to do is put your jack under there on the subframe pick the car up and then put jack stands underneath the body of the car okay just put them under there for right now leave your jack picked up take off this 18 millimeter bolt right here you can see the stud that it threads onto uh, 18 millimeter nut same thing right here so 18 millimeter nut and then there's two 12 millimeter bolts up front here so take all four of those out completely and then slowly start letting the jack down and what you'll find is that this you know gap opens up as the subframe drops down um you know don't don't drop it down so much that the studs come all the way out but you need at least a good inch and a half there uh of clearance there in order to get this shock in and out but that's about all the gum flapping i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna go ahead and stab the shock back in here and put the car back on the ground and we'll go out here and just do one more walk around on it all right one more thing and then i'll stop jibber jabbering i promise uh like you like you see here there's no bump stop that's because i had to cut it off on a stock car there's a bump bump stop that comes through here and i uh, just had to zip it off with the sawzall Mike can kind of see where i cut it off from the reason i did that is because it's a steel uh post it's much like this bump stop it's just inside the spring and it was catching on the inside of this red cool 
a bucket thing. This red fish right here was actually catching the inside of it as it was coming down. So saw all that dude off. You've got another bump stop right here. You can see where this one's been smacking pretty good right here with no shock with broken shocks and everything. But um that and then the other thing to get that shock absorber in there, you see I've already got it mounted on the top side. You're gonna need two really long extensions for the back and front bolt so there's three bolts like a triangle the back one you're going to need the long extensions the front ones you're going to need the long extension and this one on the back towards the rear of the car is actually right above this arm so you can use a wrench or you can use a shallow socket with the subframe drop down and there's there's just enough room to get it loose um, but yeah those two things I'm gonna wrap this thing up real quick, I promise. All right, we're gonna wrap it up right there. Just put that shock back on, took the car for a quick drive, made sure everything was good. And yeah, this is about what you can expect out of your eBay coolovers, about the uh, height, ride height you can get. You can, uh, you can certainly go lower than this a little bit, but you're gonna have to do some cutting um particularly rear springs would have to be cut there's almost zero way to get the rear lower without cutting the springs um front you can thread the coolovers down a little further than i got them maybe another half an inch or so but that's really about all it's got and i'm not making this video to try to say wow look at my mazda 6 it's so badass you know it's super low to the ground just trying to give you guys an idea in case you're considering purchasing said eBay coolovers. One thing on the shocks that I just installed on the rear that I, I gave you the KYB part number, KB, you know, I gave you the part number to them earlier. Um, those are only going to work if you're going this low. I mean, if you're only dropping your car a half inch or an inch, uh, honestly, keep your stock shock absorbers. Uh, just don't even put the eBay ones on, just keep your stock shock absorbers. They'll be fine for about an inch and a half. When you get into the two inch range is when they're gonna start bottoming out real bad. But I'll try to put something on the screen here or put it in the description. But I did a ton of research trying to find these shocks and I got a bunch of alternates that are kind of in between the ones I landed on and the stock ones. So you can look at that list and maybe it'll help, help you decide. And as far as ride quality goes, well, cheap coolovers all are going to ride like cheap coolovers um, i'm not going to say that these ride bad honestly uh, which like i said i turned the preload up a little bit on the front and i've got the back slammed down as low as it'll go it doesn't bounce and hop as bad as you would think but you know it's a little stiffer definitely feels more sporty you know that kind of thing honestly have no clue how this video is going to turn out if it's going to be somewhat helpful uh maybe kind of give you some pros and cons to the ebay coilovers obviously the biggest pro is that they are dirt cheap uh i want to say 300 dollars is what they're going for now but dirt cheap compared to anything else uh like i said i just took a chance on these and that's what i found and i put it in a video so that hopefully if you're doing a little research and trying to find this information You've landed here if at any point you have any questions about this drop them in the comments um, I'm very active on YouTube and well I try to answer every comment I can and I would be glad to help anybody out with anything installation wise troubleshooting anything anything going on if I can be of a help just let me know and I will certainly do that if you like the video you know what to do give it that thumbs up there and subscribe button all that good stuff but thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one